so now as we prepare to welcome Viji ma'am to uh, lead us uh, through the word, we are presently doing a study on Colossians, which is basically freedom and fullness in Christ. So uh, now that the children have gone, uh, I would encourage you to just come ahead a bit and you can. So please welcome Viji ma'am. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? I was hoping Tushar will say, please come forward. And yeah. So it's again the Sunday. It's not, it's, uh, I think it's again a coincidence that Vijay is at TLC today. And uh, it was nice. Thank you, Akash, for the worship songs that you chose. Yeah. So uh, as you know that we are doing the book of Colossians uh, last Sunday, Vijay went through from the chapter, first chapter, one to eight verses. So today we'll be going through the next uh, verses from nine to 14. So last time we looked at, uh, you know, Paul's greeting to the, to the Col Colossians, where he thanks God for their faith, love, and hope. And we saw how faith, uh, you know, is uh, faith and love are really the outcome of the eternal hope that we have in the Lord Jesus. So uh, Paul now continues to pray in the next verses. And uh, let us see what we can unpack and understand from this prayer of Paul. And uh, last time Vijay also took us through how Paul is talking about the inheritance that we already received as children of God. As it came out in the worship today also, God has already blessed us. You know, I think Vivek also prayed. He's we, on the basis of what he has blessed us with is what our lives are, how we live our lives. So in fact, Paul's emphasis is always to be so assured of what we have already received through the work of the Lord Jesus on, on the cross. But you will see that he is in no way complacent. And just be self-sufficient. Okay, God has done this for us and be happy. He doesn't end there. He continuously, he challenges us, you know, and he tells us, you know, we have every spiritual blessing that, you know, God gave and he urges us and he challenges us to live lives worthy of his calling. So let us see from this prayer of Paul uh, for the Colossian church. Okay, so it says, uh, I'll just read through this, first chapter 9 to 14. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. I'll just pray first. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Thank you. And as we go through this, Lord, help us to understand and give us a uh, uh, under clear understanding as this prayer says that help us, Lord, reveal your will to us. Lord Jesus, we entrust this time. I pray against every distraction. Help, help us as we unpack. May the word come with the power of God. I pray this in Jesus' name. So as we look at this prayer, we learn a lot about how we should pray. Uh, for God's church and for his, you know, God's church means his God's people. Because always the church is under attack, you know, from within and from outside as well. So this prayer shows us how we can intercede for the body of Christ at large, you know, like, so for believers and those, who, those whom we know and those whom we don't know. Because here Paul did not know Colossian church, you know, they, he never even met them. He's only heard. So the characteristics of this prayer in this text will really strengthen our prayer life. That's what uh, our prayer is. That Let us look at this text and see what we can learn. So, oh, this is the second part. Yeah, sorry. I think I didn't complete this. I, I thought all of it was in one. 
anyway so we'll just go through the whole thing so here you know the the best part of paul's prayer though is not what you know he asks for you know he he it's it's not about what he asks for and it is not even about what the reason uh, why he asks for what he asks for but really it's the best part is the basis on which he asks god the foundation the basis is that god has what god has already done for us and he for us and then you know based on this he puts across his requests so we see from many letters of paul galatians in everywhere we see that he urges us to pray and he himself models he is an intercessor he intercedes for uh, others so this is the basis on which paul prays he because god forgave us since he rescued us he transferred us from darkness to light and he qualified us to share share in his inheritance we'll see it again now here it is uh, first let's take a bit i divided it into five parts so uh, this first is for this reason since the day we heard about you we have not stopped praying for you so what is he talking about what is the reason and what did he hear that made him to pray like this so Uh, to, i as i said paul has never seen this church never i mean seen meaning never met but at the time of this writing paul was in prison and it was one of his disciples epaphras who took the gospel to the uh, to this church and he was in touch with paul paul was his mentor he was in touch with paul and he kept giving feedback of what is happening so paul says for this reason so when he says for this reason means after he heard from epaphras how these people you know uh, he understood the true gospel if you see the previous verses that's what we did last week how they understood the true gospel and how they loved the holy spirit so that is what he heard that is what the epaphras has told paul also from what he uh, shared epaphras to him he came to an understanding that there are some false doctrines that are creeping into the church and because of that paul is inspired to pray it was this information that led paul to into a deep prayer and if you see paul was not just sitting in his room and expecting holy spirit to prompt to his mind without any information without getting any outside information yes holy spirit ultimately and definitely prompts us brings us to the memory of what we have heard you know so uh, that is what has happened in here in with paul so uh, sometimes a part of the uh, reason many of us struggle to you know with our prayer life is because we are not informed we don't know how to pray we don't know for whom to pray we don't know what to pray for them so it's always good we ought to know the problems of our friends around us and of our church of our you know the company where we work or our nation so it is not good to stay without knowing what is happening around us when we know then only we can pray when we know what's happening in someone's life we can pray in those lines so we can see a glimpse of uh, this in the example of nehemiah so it, it says i mean you all know this is this also been put into yeah so this is what uh, the nehemiah the words of nehemiah son of hekala in the month of kislev in the 20th year while i was in the citadel of susa hanani one of my brothers came from juda with some other men and i questioned them about the jewish rem, jewish remnant that survived the exile and also about jerusalem they said to me those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and dis- disgrace the wall of jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burnt with fire when i heard these things i sat down and wept for some days i mourned and fasted and prayed before the god of heaven so here nehemiah if you see you know he was the cup bearer in a palace actually he had no worries to think about he had no needs but he lived because he lived in a very grand you know environment where he didn't lack anything but that was not an excuse for him to be just blinded to the pains of you know what is happening in in the people of god and so when his brother visited him he asked him about the jews left in israel 
and about the city of Jerusalem. So upon hearing that seriousness of the situation, he went into deep fasting and mourning. He took on their pain and he identified with them and wept for them and then he felt compelled to return to Israel and help. So Nehemiah was informed and that prompted his prayer life. And if you see Nehemiah's book, you know, that is how he, he goes around his mission, that his calling he understands and, you know, he builds that wall and he takes on people and the whole story is because he heard. He, if he was happy sitting in his palace, nothing of this would have happened. So that is uh, the, you know, so may our eyes and ears be open to what our brothers and sisters are going through, by which only then we'll be prompted to pray for them and with a burden. So that is the first part of it. Why he prayed, why Paul is praying for this reason ever since I heard of you. So what is it that he heard and how important it, important it is to hear. That's the thing. So the next is the second part of this verse, ninth verse. So we continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the spirit gives. So what is this knowledge, wisdom, understanding that spirit gives and what is it for? And for, Paul doesn't ask for some new mystical knowledge. What he asks is the proper use of what is already theirs in Christ Jesus so that they can discern better. Discern what? What is God's will for my life? So having an understanding of God's will is to really to do God's will. Right? If you know somebody, only you have to know what that person wants. Only then you will do what he, he or she wants. So this is what it is. So the God's will is, knowing God's will is necessary to live his will. So that is what the spirit of God gives. You know, that is not a worldly knowledge or not something that comes from uh, worldly wisdom, but it is really what the Holy Spirit gives. So this kind of wisdom and knowledge will be entirely different. Entirely different because, you know, it is something very opposite. God says something and totally opposite as Zuri has prayed about those things. So we need God to help us discern things, you know, rightly. That is what Paul is asking God to give them wisdom and knowledge to discern. So even if you see Solomon's story, Solomon, when he became a king, you know, he doesn't ask for anything else because Solomon understood that the knowing God's wisdom, having God's wisdom, having this understanding God's will and knowledge, only then he can do what God, you know, be, take care of the nation. That, that's what Solomon asks. And we, we, we see that God honors that. You know, God says, you haven't asked for anything else. And, you know, so he gives that as well. So that is what God honors. So when we face difficult situations and difficult people, sometimes on a daily basis, you know, living a life on this earth is not, it's very challenging. You know, but so we undoubtedly need God to fill us with knowledge of his will through all wisdom and understanding that the spirit gives. So all of us need that. So now, what is the result of this? I mean, what is the uh, uh, outcome? What, why? Why do we need that is, it says that so that we may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. So now all of us are expected to live lives worthy of the Lord. He is a master. You know, he is the, he is our Lord and the master. So we ought to, ought to live lives worthy of the Lord. So our life should be in such a way that, you know, we will be an adequate picture to outside world to know uh, the Lord and his purposes for us and for the humanity in general. For example, to walk worthily of Christ is to walk harmoniously with other Christians. You know, disunity in the church is really unworthy of him. This fullness of knowledge in Christ Jesus that comes from the Holy Spirit helps us. You know, when Paul is praying that, 
he's not praying for unity but he's praying for the knowledge of god what is his will what is the wisdom that comes from above that will help us to resist the lies of the enemy that will help us to bring in any disunity so that is when we will be living lives worthy of his calling only when we understand god's will and then pleasing him in every way the knowledge and wisdom that you know god helps us you know when we get that you know we will really fall in love with him and we want to please him in every way we will constantly be studying the word and you know understanding what is it that it pleases him what is it that it displeases him you know we understand that and we would do that you know so this is this comes as a result of god giving us the knowledge and see the connection so as we do this and we will really be set free from an unhealthy uh, uh, desire and na- natural desire to please others you know i am like that i i mean i can say i am getting better god is working but you know if i am really i i would love to he- know that i am in good books of everybody you know and i and if and if i hear that oh someone doesn't like me or you know they are not happy with me or you know something i hear or i feel and i get very disturbed and i will do make amendments you know immediately call or do something so that you know things will fall into place but i don't know how many of you can relate with this so we have to be constantly be praying for ourselves you know this prayer god reveal to me the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and understanding that the spirit gives so that i can live a life of worthy of your calling pleasing you in every way you know that is that should be our prayer because only then we can overcome these things then you can see through the knowledge of god's will we constantly bear fruit and increase in good deeds here we can see the link bearing fruit has to result in good deeds bearing fruit and uh, if it is not resulting in an outward action it is of no use actually i have read this that you know god you know will is not really the is god is not looking at how spiritual we are yes we have to be spiritual but how practical also the spirituality has to you know flow into practicality of our of our uh, faith so god's will and understanding and wisdom that comes from god leads us to love others rather than love ourselves you know that is what is bearing fruit and leading to good works and then grow in the knowledge of god who god is so the result of having the knowledge of god's will for our lives our understanding of wisdom is foursome we saw that all the four you know one is pleasing him in every way worthy of living a life worthy of his calling pleasing him in every way then yeah bearing fruit and increasing in good works and grow in the knowledge of god so life you know in a way that fully pleases god when we live our lives where we are fully pleasing god with you know filled with good deeds towards other it is really it's not easy it is not easy at all but only in christ only when we know jesus only when we understand he gives us an understanding then we can be discerning all these things it is really a supernatural uh, revelation of god that the spirit gives so let's go to the next part you know so then the next he says it's a continuation of the same five verses okay so being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the father so what is this purpose of being strengthened like this this prayer is you know paul is praying for ordinary people or colossians who are there for ordinary people he is praying that you know who are like us you know who have flaws who have weaknesses all of that you know he is praying for them to be strengthened with all power that demonstrates god's glory 
the you know when we think of power and strength and all we think of you know i was trying to log in and see uh, some um, fights or something where just to show the thing so i was seeing that you know uh, pathan movie and uh, what is that F uh, english movie also something came so anyway the few movies that i saw some fights so it's all like you know fast and furious so it's like how uh, the power and strength that they show the world thinks of the power and strength is really like you know physically do and you know just showing them to be powerful but see the reason why paul is asking god to strengthen them you know we might think of we'll come out like a heroes you know like out of all that but he says he says so that they may have great endurance and patience so endurance and patience are not required if there is no issue there is no problem if there is no difficulty why do we need that but god is saying strengthen them in such a way that they they will have great endurance and patience so the strength we receive from god is not like what we see in these movies that they show you know in physical strength and show them as very powerful but when we are strengthened by god with all power according to his glorious might it will help us to endure all suffering helps us to wait patiently for god like uh, mira's testimony last time was wait god said wait i i am doing something so in that waiting there is a, a patience is required only then you you are waiting patiently otherwise if you are grumbling and complaining and just in a very uh, you know hopeless way then there is no uh, there is no difference so waiting patiently for god to intervene to do things according to his will so we need god's strength for that we need god's strength to overcome our own insecurities our own fears and doubts and every other thought that the enemy puts in so we need strength to overcome god's strength to overcome all these and many times we understand you know we use endurance and patience uh, um, uh, exchanging i mean it's an interchanging way but actually patience can it's defined as the ability to accept delay or any trouble calmly that is what is patience the ability to accept delays god is saying wait wait patiently calmly you know that is all the trouble you go through very patiently on the other hand endurance is experiencing and surviving pain in hardship that means right now you are going through that pain you know that is when you need endure you are enduring the person difficult person you are enduring the uh, difficulty or the sickness or whatever it is it is to bring god the glory so this prayer can be our prayer you know for ourselves and for each of us that may we be strengthened by god with all power according to his might and as we grow in patience and endurance and as we do that what is the result what is the outcome of it we will be so strong in god that we have the power to endure and patiently wait through all difficulties that we are not waiting for things to get better to give praise to god so you know it is we are not waiting that you know it's it's the next is joyfully uh, joy fully uh, praise the lord that's it is so joy under pressure and through trials is one of the marvels of god's work in his people i mean we could just we can stick this somewhere it's really such a uh, wonderful truth this is so joy in the circumstances good circumstances praise the lord it's all i mean it is nothing god doesn't get the glory but god joy under pressure and through trials is one of the marvels of god's work in his people i'm sure you would have seen i mean i can't help bringing annie's example i mean i have seen this exactly this part you know coming uh, seeing in her life and it is really god's work it's god's work that is why it is so marvelous so going on to the next one so who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins 
and all that paul is you know and what is this what is this qualification to be able to share in inheritance in his inheritance so all that what paul is asking and praying for people is because of this accomplished work of the lord jesus in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins so we can see this this verse what we see in this verse is the father has qualified us the colossian he is telling the colossian but he's qualified us each of us sitting here to share in the inheritance of the saints and then he has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and he has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son so because this is the done thing this god has done and with these tremendous blessings already accomplished for us on behalf of you know uh, what jesus has done for us and we can be sure that prayers for knowledge and power will be answered when we pray in these lines and if you see the ripple effect of these actually i wanted to just uh, put some points there so it you can see the ripple effect is something happens first then it goes and it just goes like that so it is the first thing, foremost is what we have already got through christ we have got forgiveness of sins we are qualified we have been plucked out from the darkness and put on the light in the light so that is the basis that is the foundational thing and then the revelation of god's will his wisdom his understanding through the holy spirit then that happens as we we have, we have what god has done based on that this happens then that helps us to live lives worthy of his calling that helps us to live lives in a way that pleases god in every way that helps us to bearing fruit and in every good work and then that again that goes on to that will be then we will be strengthened and increase in endurance and patience and then out of that comes joyful praises giving thanks to god so paul is praying that the christians in colossian church be filled with the knowledge of god's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so i mean do we any of us all of us i think we can identify we do struggle to pray right it is some of us you know we we don't know what words to say or knowing you know if you are praying correctly or not what exactly to pray what is god's will so all this if we are when we are struggling in this text we see paul praying for god's will for the church so we can be sure that it is god's will and you know it is this particular prayer is you know it's a spirit led prayer because paul is praying and god allowed this to come into the scriptures so it is really we can pray in these lines and remember paul is praying this when we, he heard about the wrong doctrines that are creeping in and he didn't say okay god please remove them remove them from wrong doctrine take them away whoever is doing that and protect them from the doctrine he is not saying that he is saying that he prayed the very foundations to be correct strengthen them you know he is reminding them that how you are qualified how you are doing you know it's basing on this you know strengthen them lord and he is praying this particular prayer will really take away i mean it answers many quest many things not just about you know one or two things like this so we when we have fullness of christ in a knowledge of him that is what will help us not to fall for the wrong teachings that is what will help us not to uh, you know be, be a prey to the enemy another prayer that you know this is uh, uh, from ephesians 3 19 to 21 paul almost resounds this prayer almost like he is saying similar thing what he has prayed here so he is saying now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us so his power is at work within us so to you know to him be the glory in the church and in christ jesus through all generations so and he's saying god is able so let paul's prayers really encourage us to pray for the for one another to be strengthened with all power to be filled with all knowledge and god's will and let this prayer really encourage us to pray you know for other believers for each other 
and let us be assured that there is a great inheritance waiting for us there is a great inheritance waiting so i just thought if if it is uh, possible i mean we can just oh, there is time no where's tushar yeah just two minutes more so i thought let us see now as we gone through this prayer the, the last verses are that god is saying what is the basis on which we are praying you know that we are qualified we have been redeemed we have been reconciled we have been plucked out from the darkness and placed in the light and you know forgiven sins so let us think of at least five people let's think of five people who do not know this truth who do not who are just lost unless this foundation is placed rightly we cannot pray other things we cannot say oh be strong my dear you know be strong don't uh, do how will you be strong if you don't know jesus so let us pray for five people let's just quietly in our hearts you know just think of five people and pray for them god you know you qualified us you have you know forgiven our sins you have you know transferred us from the kingdom of darkness to kingdom of light you have done this so lord may you do this in this person this person let's think of five people just a minute take a minute yeah so now are you done so now let us you know think of five people in the church can be from your lg or from non lg other lg doesn't matter think of five people who know the lord and pray in these lines i have put five thing and i just to make it easy i said thought let the let us pray this scripture into the people so let's pray god i ask you to fill me this one this one this one this one with the knowledge of your will so let's pray like that and it's really such an effective prayer you know this uh, prayer let's pray this for every for think of five people thank thanks uh, joshua is there no he's gone up sorry I, i in the beginning i was a bit confused but i think they did a good job thanks steven yeah i'm done thank you thank you ma'am for this uh, for this amazing reminder uh, of uh, how we can patiently endure and and the word of god is uh, is really something that um, uh, that will give us that strength and uh, and and it is incumbent on us really to uh, be a praying church and to carry each other so thank you for that ma'am so can i just uh, Just say a prayer in closing heavenly father we thank you lord for how you piece things together lord we thank you for this uh, for your word which has given us this uh, study and uh, which is uh, helping us uh, to really understand 
just how deep your word is and just uh, just what it means for us to lead this life this life which is uh, worthy of you lord uh, lord we thank you and uh, we really praise you for who you are lord uh, and now uh, we pray lord that uh, the lord bless us and keep his uh, the lord make his uh, face shine upon us lord and be gracious to us lord Uh, lift up his countenance upon us and give us this peace both now today and forever we ask this in jesus name lord amen